First item is to approve the agenda. Does anybody have anything they want to add to the agenda? I want to add an executive session at the end to discuss legal matters. Okay. <clears throat> executive session legal at the end. Um, we'll need a, an item here to, um, at the last meeting we set the, uh, the increase in rates for the town's employees, but the clerk was left out. So if we can add an item for the clerk rate adjustment. Okay. Um, so we'll do that. Um, let's just put it at the bottom after Russell and Graphics. So let's call it. It's an item for Canadian Awards. Set, setting the clerk's rate. Pay rate. In the clerk's rate. Pay rate. Okay. Does that work for you guys? Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. <clears throat> we also want to add in an executive session um, as soon as we reveal these select board member applicants. Um, we'll talk publicly about it and then, and then go into an executive session so the board has the opportunity to talk about the applicants. Mm -hmm. after that. Mm -hmm. And all four applicants are here for discussion. Okay. Any questions? Thank you. That's all I had. Anybody else have anything else? I move that we approve the agenda as uh, amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Second. I can't hear it. It was probably me. Let's just go with that. Right <laughs> It'll pick it up. Uh, anything uh, public comment, inquiry? Anything that's not on the agenda for this evening that anybody would like to comment on? Uh, that's time. Any kind of All right, hearing none, we'll move on. So typically, uh, we'll move on to the, the applicants for the select board position that is open. Um, this position would be uh, appointed until the next meeting in March, um, where then it will be, I think, well, his term was up anyways. I can't remember if it's a, I think his is a three-year term. Yeah. So, yeah. so we'll be uh, filling the remainder of the three-year term of Carl Russell. Um, I've been through a couple of these, so typically what, we, what we'll do is um, we have all four of the applicants here tonight. So um, usually if you want, we'll give you the opportunity to, to stand up and be recognized. Any small little tidbits you want to throw out there. Um, so, and, then, uh, and then after the board We'll go into executive session and kind of go through them and then come back out. It shouldn't be a too long of an executive session. Okay, so. Anybody want to uh, go first? Uh, Nicole? Hi, I'm Nicole. I'm from East Bethel. And I like living in Bethel. It's a nice place. Uh, when I heard about this vacancy, I was interested in it because I feel like I could help. I genuinely know that I could commit to the second and fourth Monday of each month until town meeting to sit and listen and help the select board, help the town, help them. Thank Grew up, lived in Bethel, went to school here, starting to raise a family here. I have two children, two and three months old now. Um, interested in the position. I've always kind of had a draw on politics in Bethel. 
just would like to give a shot. I don't really have an agenda, so you know, open to opinions, and I don't I think we need to all work together as a team. You know, kind of go forward with the town. You know, this town tries to the right direction, keep it going that way. Okay. Derek's application. Mm -hmm. And David. <coughs> My name is Dave Eddy. Um, I've uh, recently uh, completed a tour at the school. And uh, I'd like to think I could bring in some experience with working with the five person board, which is fairly new to the town level. Um, and I'd like to serve the time. Okay, thank you. Everybody have it. James. Yep. Thank you. And Adam. Uh, my name is Adam Stafford. Um, I do have an agenda. My background is, is in finance. And um, when I look at what's going on in the town, and it's on the cusp of what feels like an a economic rebirth, and, and Main Street is, is turning over. Um, the town faces some very serious financial challenges. And um, I care, much like all the, the candidates here, and I quite frankly, I don't think you can go wrong with any of the people that made the effort. Um, but I think maybe I bring something different in my professional background. Uh, and I'm very comfortable with numbers. I'm an engineer by training, and I try to approach problem solving that way. Um, I look forward to helping you guys today. It's worth Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So what we'll do now is we'll have a, an executive session where we'll talk about the applicants and then we'll come out and make a decision. I think we, we can step out instead of making all these people step out, can we? Downstairs. <coughs> you can go to the boardroom downstairs if you want. Okay, that's fine. Do that. You want me with you? Yeah. Need a motion. Like Only because it's Eric. Oh, yeah. yes. Cool down there. We'll be going to executive session to uh, determine a new member of the select board. Second. Second. You want a motion to come out of this executive session? Yeah. So move. Second. something so that to raise your hand and actually move forward on that. Um, it, was, um, it was good to see that we had four candidates, which um, in some of the past we haven't had as many. So, and it was good that, you know, probably each one of you have a little different something to offer the board, which was nice as well. Um, regardless of, um, you know, being appointed or not being appointed, we definitely would like to make sure that, you know, be a part of the community. You, if the select board is the direction um, you want to go on, uh, there's plenty of committees that could help um, between now and seven months from now. Um, and this position is a seven month uh, position, so it will come available at town meeting. So, um, so we, we had a chance to deliberate downstairs and um, it took a little bit of discussion uh, with the board. But the board feels um, at this time what we'd like to do is move forward with Dave Eddy. So, um, so for tonight, uh, Dave, you're, you're more than welcome to join the board. Um, you can't uh, vote on anything um, this evening until we have an opportunity to uh, be sworn in by the clerk. Um, so you're more than, more than welcome to sit on the board tonight or we'll make your seat. Thank you, Dave. Again, thank you all the other candidates, Adam, Nicole, here. Um, you know, if we had the ability to put four people on the board, then we would do that. Um, but unfortunately, I had to pick one, so. <coughs> it's hot out here. So, we will move on. <laughs> We'll be shooting in the dark here. We don't have any other paperwork, but. 
So the uh, next item uh, this evening, we go over the mass coma note. Everybody got that in the packet. Um, so what, do you want to go over that at all, the line of credit? Mm -hmm. Trees can go over. It's just yeah. something we, we have to draft. Some we do. Our daily yeah. drafting packet. These are the actual ones. So you'll, there's a resolution, obviously, and then the loan paperwork. And it's a simple tax anticipation of line of credit. You one every year just to have one so that when you, you know, running out of money near the end of the fiscal year in between tax installments, so which is where we're at right now. Money is very tight and uh, I've been holding capables right now until um, until we can take a draw off the line of credit. Taxes will you know are due August 15th first installment and um, we'll be printing and mailing starting to mail out the taxes tomorrow. So we will see an influx of cash in a little bit but so we're seeing right now. So it's pretty standard. I think it's stuff you guys have done before. Um, the uh, interest rate is on there. And obviously, we only take a draw off if we need it. We had one before, and we actually didn't even take a draw off. So if we don't need it, we don't draw. Oh, is that the previous one that we did? Yeah, and it expired. You know, they were new. They do, they, we did this one for a year. I think when I came in last time in September, I realized that you didn't have one. So we did one maybe around December. It was kind of last six yeah. months. Yeah. So this is for the full cap, you know, year. So it's nice to have it in place um, for you during that time. Well, I would entertain a motion um, to allow Fast Home Savings Bank to be there. Make a choice uh, for the tax anticipation department. And you also have to do the resolution. So we have to, the resolution, the resolution as well. Yeah, the resolution is part of it, the base, which you don't have a copy of because I didn't have the resolution from the attorney yet. So the resolution is first and then the what, sign of the document. So if you want to make a motion to sign the resolution and the loan papers, you're good to go. So move. Yeah. Okay. Second. Second. All in favor? All right. All right. There's just one signature on this, right? Um, that is you guys. I think it asked for everybody. Sign all of it. Yeah, right, but we only have to sign once. No, we're going to sign two separate things. Does he have the original? He does. Page two. Yeah, I that one. And in the very back. Oh, there we go. Yeah, exactly. Four. Back. It's the last page. So there's three spots. There's three yeah. spots. Yeah. Errors and omissions. Yeah. And the disbursement request and authorization. Thank <laughs> you. 
Third page. Third page. So we put them all together onto one sheet with the intent of, of having the board look at them as a whole and approving the entire fee schedule as a whole. Um, so we compiled everything and we, we kind of got it all jotted down and then we looked at some of the other towns around us for some of these items that we wanted to, to uh, either increase the fee substantially um, or try to make it on par with everyone else. So um, the third sheet in your packet has uh, so the zoning fees. So what we did, we went, we found out that, that we were actually collecting way less than what it was actually costing us to do uh, zoning applications. So um, not only were we not collecting enough to cover the, the labor involved, but there's postage and there's other ancillary type things that go along with, with subdivisions that were not being collected on. So um, applicants were coming in and they were essentially doing these subdivisions for, for free. Um, so we, we corrected that with this fee schedule um, so that they are paying the fees for all the, for the, uh, the tasks and the items that come up because of their subdivision. Uh, in the past, the town was paying for this. So postage, for, for, for example, um, if you did a major subdivision, you had to send certified letters to your abutters. Well, the town was actually doing that for the applicants, and those were like $6 a piece. Um, we have since corrected that, and now the, app, the, the applicant is doing that themselves, or they can hand deliver them. But, but just as an example, so there were a lot of things that were that the town was eating the cost for uh, when they should. So, uh, when somebody comes in and does an application for a subdivision or, or any sort of a, a zoning application, the town and the, the taxpayers of the town shouldn't be footing the bill for any of that. Um, the, the, the fees themselves should be adequate enough to cover any costs that the town could incur. So that was a large part of what we did with this fee schedule. We took um, the zoning and we, we itemized it out into um, different types of zoning that we have in our new zoning code. Um, we combined some of the, uh, the development review hearing stuff. Uh, for instance, it had a, a major subdivision cost, and then it had a cost for if you go to a hearing. Well, all major subdivisions go to a hearing anyway. So we consolidated those and combined those into one line item. Um, we actually, then we just kind of raised some of the fees so that they were on par with what we were seeing in other places. Um, we looked at the pool. Um, the pool is, is it's great for the town, the kids love it, it's a great place to go. It's never going to make money, but the fees that we're charging now are, are, are very low. And they've been historically low for a long time. So we looked at that, um, looked at Randolph to see you know, where they are. And um, we proposed fees that were on par with what they had. Um, now, now these can all change, you know, this is, the idea of this is here they are, we can negotiate. You guys can choose whatever you want for a fee. Uh, but that's kind of the idea with this whole thing is to consolidate all these different fees. Everything from, from large subdivisions down to making copies. Anything that costs the town money and anything we should be charging a fee for, we consolidate it into one fee schedule. So that we're not trying to track down what are we supposed to charge for this? What are we supposed to charge for this? It's all right here. It can all be approved as one clean, easy document. Um, so that was really it. We just took everything we thought that, that we might be uh, incurring a cost to it, whether that's labor or, or postage or whatever, and are trying to recuperate our costs. Um, 
the idea is not to make money at all. We're a nonprofit, but we want to at least cover the cost of, of doing business. So. And this also goes with, we've seen with rates, you know, we talked about water rates and sewage rates and things like that mm -hmm. on, you know, uh, cost per 1,000 gallons, you know, that we were charging when it costs us three times that amount to treat that water, you know. So I think, you know, to continue on with the, um, just kind of update and getting us to present, uh, we did talk, talk about the zoning end of things at the last meeting. Uh, it doesn't look like anything's changed from those. Did, did, did the board have any, any issue with the zoning fee well, just, structure that we had there? Just a question. The, the comparison sheet is that what you're looking at? I'm looking at it. Right. Well, on the comparison zoning fee, if you take a major subdivision and add a hearing to it, you say, right? So that's 270? Uh, it's, yeah, we have proposed a 250. Right. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah, that's where we combine it because a major automatically gets a hearing. Yeah. So we just combine those two and said, okay, you're going to have a hearing regardless. Yeah. So this is the cost. All right. Yeah. And what we saw before for anyone that wasn't here is the fee structure that we had for zoning was, you know, a third or a fourth of what everybody in the area was charging. Uh, but you can clearly see that, you know, let's say for instance, uh, a residential zoning application of $20 or $22 now, you know, once you sit down and break, break apart the timing that goes into doing that application, it ends up costing the town more than Last time, I believe, we had a number that was somewhere around $60. Right, exactly. So, so what was happening, and this was a, a fee that was set many, many years ago, that maybe $22 many years ago was the right number, but it's clearly not the right number now. And, and communities in the area have identified that as well. Um, you know, our neighbors, you know, just on residential zoning fee, for instance, you know, Farmer is at $60, Randolph is at $80. So there's uh, we're proposing to go to 60, so we're, you know, trying to get our, our revenue to match the cost, which which was a trend in the town for many years and why we got into the situation that we are in now. Now, this is kind of the, you know, the easier low-hanging fruit things now, but, you know, all these 20, 100, thousand dollar items all add up to a big number. So, well, especially if you get into a hearing like the DRB, you know, with, Right. Dollar General and those types of things. Right. Yeah, if you get a, a big applicant like that in the past. The cost it was just, Tom was eating all that. Yeah. So the zoning we went over pretty heavily last time. Mm -hmm. um, I had asked some questions for Greg, and I don't know if you got them or not yet, but under the administration sections for like um, weight permits and things, those are set by the state. Those are, yeah, uh, Therese, those. Yeah, those are set by the state. Which is just, you know, in my opinion, it's ridiculous because you charge someone a ten dollar overweight permit to travel down the road that does a lot more than ten dollars of damage. You know, uh, that's nothing that we can do. Uh, the next section that we can, uh, there was some um, uh, the fee structure for the town hall didn't change. Uh, there were some additives in here in case someone wanted to use a projection screen or gauge lights, things like that. That wasn't there was no mm -hmm. price before. Right. The, uh, there was a small uh, reservation or hookup fees for Van Shell and Peabody Park. And the idea for that is that and currently whenever you reserve a park, you, d you just, we put a sign out that says reserve. But it's still first come, first serve. So if, if you have a reserve and somebody else decides they want to have a party, you're out of luck. What the reservation does is it actually we give you a placard that says you have actually paid for this and you're reserving this space. And if there's an issue with anybody else being there, there's a number you can call, which is me. Um, and somebody will go out and they will they will make sure that you are they give given access to that space. So that's what the fee's about. So it's an actually it's an actual true reservation of that space. But if we get into reserving spots mm -hmm. on the town land, is that yeah, you see that? You're still reserving it. It is public space, you're right. You see that getting into more of a, an issue of policing and, you know, I reserved it, but someone else is there. Right. It's a Sunday afternoon, do you 
want to be bothered to come down on Sunday afternoon to, you know. It also begs the question, is there enough conflict that this is even necessary? I don't know. Again, these are just, they're proposed, and if we feel that they're not, not needed, they're not needed. But um, it's just something that I, I know in other places I've been that we did that. Now, there might have been more demand for the space. If, yeah. if we're not seeing the demand, then we don't need to. So that's I guess the worry. line part might be different than the van shell. Mm -hmm. I mean, the yeah. van shell might make more sense if you want to reserve the van shell for mm -hmm. uh, a period of time. Uh, you know, because there's more to it than just a park. You know, you know there's electrical, there's events, you know, mm -hmm. that go on there. So you want to schedule it and make it more. There is an electrical. You, you can hook up, or you used to have an electrical at the at park P as you want to do. At Peavine, yeah. But it isn't quite the venue, you know, no, it's not a venue it's like, not. like Van like Chill. Yeah. So how does the board feel in regards to potentially doing reservations? Um, for the Peabody Park and the band show. And again, it was just, it's proposed in case there's a conflict. And, and if there's not? Or, yeah, I think the band show, like you say, it's a different venue. So if you have bands come in there on a Wednesday night, or, you know, it's usually an organized event that's going to happen there. That's, I don't see that that's so much of an issue. Peabody, have we had a lot of conflict about it? No, we haven't. Um, that was a, the question I asked after we proposed this, is, and I asked that to mark and of others and he said no not really mm -hmm. we don't really see that so you know, yeah. go ahead yeah. Yeah, but don't, I, I'm, I'm I, thought, I thought kelly said you were currently reserving it you just weren't getting money for it you were reserved no she said it we reserve it and she puts a sign out she goes out on saturday puts a sign that says reserve right but that but it means absolutely nothing and she doesn't get paid and there's no money exchange there's no money exchange, okay. but it's still a first come. Mm -hmm. Technically, it's still a first come, first serve. So you're doing it now, it's, it's not getting paid for it. Uh, yes. Okay. I was just, yeah. I thought I thought this was like. Yep. Yeah, I guess I'm. I see both of those locations as fine. If if we're already offering reservations, why not have some revenue from it? But also, if if a group knows, you know, we want every second Sunday of May. We want to host our big family reunion gathering. They can always set that date and reserve it. It's it's kind of a nice thing, and maybe more people would take advantage of it if they knew it was an option. Yeah, I don't know. Sounds good. Yeah, right now the reservation is it's just a it's a it's a board that goes up and says it's reserved. Uh, there are no contact numbers. There's no information. It's just it's just reserved. Right. Um, the idea was, you know, with a with, with a fee, we would actually have a reservation. Um, permit, if you will, that would show that it's actually reserved by this individual, and if there are any problems, any issues, you know, give this number a call. So there's a, there's a little more, another element to it uh, if there was a fee assessed. Right now, uh, I mean, Teresa's right, we are going out, we are, she's spending half an hour, whatever it is, going out, putting the sign up, we're not making anything on it at all, and it's costing us, you know, half an hour worth of pay, so. Um, but right now, that we're also not policing it as, as closely as we would. Right. In my opinion, if, if we had this and we had an actual reserved card with uh, the, the person who has reserved its name on it and all the contact, there would be more um, involvement by the town if there's any issues. Okay. So the, the workload could it potentially would. go up. It could, yes. On, on certain circumstances, yeah. Now, again, I don't know if there's a, a huge issue with it. I don't know if people are knocking down the door to to use the band shell every Friday. I don't know. But. About the uh, recreation center. I mean, I know at some point, the recreation center is going to get larger. Um, mm -hmm. You know, the goal here at some point is to be year round place. Right. You know, bring out most of the seasonal establishment. But um, I thought that was kind of a little bit of a jump. So, so that is um, that is a jump to what Randolph charges. Um, it's right on par with what they charge. Um, again, it could be a slower rise if you propose. I mean, it could stay where it's at. What we're trying to do is, it, again, the swimming pool loses money. It's going to lose money no matter what. That's just the way it is. Um, it was just this was just an attempt to kind of close that gap a little bit and get us on par with with some of our neighbors. Um, so our, our it is basically cost, our labor costs are up now too over 20 years ago. Sure, and I don't know when the last time the the rates were raised out there for the pool. 
I think it's been quite a while. Well, um, we actually raised the rates at the pool a couple of years ago, but it wasn't a significant increase. It was slight modifications. And the rent committee was here at the time that proposed the rates. And I can't remember why, why they determined the rate. Our rates are significantly lower than Randolph's, and there was a reason for that. I think they had feared um, membership there if, Due to, I think at that time Randolph had um, a larger schedule. It was more open yeah, or something. There was there was a. It went from like fifty to sixty, and you used to get a free set of lessons, and now you get like a reduced amount on a lesson and that kind of thing. So it was minor, but. Another, another change that, that actually didn't get here that we're proposing is um, there's a different fee for resident and non-resident, and we're proposing that we eliminate that. Um, we're trying to pull people from different towns, non-residents. We're trying to pull them into our pool. Uh, I don't really want to feel that I need to penalize them for being out of town. That's kind of the idea. Um, others may think that you know if you're non-residents, you're not paying your taxes to help support this pool in the first place. So, so that's would, why you pay it. Would extra. you sort of level out? It would be the same. Difference. The idea is to be the same. Again, we're, we're kind of following what Randolph has done, their model. Uh, they, they eliminated a few years ago, they eliminated the resident, non resident. Um, right, I guess I'm asking right now there's a differential between resident and non resident. Yeah, eliminating so you, that. Right, you're, but which rate would you be going with? Or uh, we would, would be so going with the, the resident. Okay. Yeah. It's all about the non-tax revenue. <laughs> yes, sir. I, I'm just wondering, what is the, the benefit you really want to get out of these facilities? Is it about bringing the town together and having people come down to meet? Or is it trying to get a little extra revenue, which is really, I think, going to be de minimis when it's all said and done? And you know, there's a danger that you alienate people who come down and see half of Randolph's in the art um, or people, I think Randolph charges for their gun range, and we don't, so people from Randolph come over and, and use our gun range. At the end of the day, these costs are not covered. Taxpayers are still paying for these facilities. To draw no distinction between someone who comes from out of town, out of town who does not pay taxes, and somebody who lives here and who should enjoy the property, doesn't make sense to me. And, and, you know, I understand we need to raise revenue in the town. I'm not sure raising the pool fee is going to get us where the town needs to be. Well, the intent of raising the rates of the pool is not to fund my entire town. It's to get good, qualified lifeguards to pay for them somewhat themselves. I'm not going to build a road off the pool revenues I'm going to make. That's not the idea. It's just to try to close a large gap um, and make it function. And we all know that the pool is not going to be self-sustaining ever. Yeah. But if it can also not be a, a large burden financially on the town and the taxpayers. Well, um, is there a danger that you lose that some people in town actually drop off? Because they and that's true. There may be. You may very well be right. I don't know. That's and that's why we're talking about this. If this is a good idea or not. If we did that, I think that would be a shame. Right, but. I mean, you're talking a, a it, it's right now it costs you $40, is that what it is? $60 for a family of six to swim all year long. That's $10 per person. Lifeguards make on average $12 an hour. So it's, it's just an attempt to try to stop a little bit of the bleeding. Uh, now, I don't know if, if an increase, you know, a doubling of the, of the rate is probably excessive. I mean, it sounds like that's kind of the consensus here. Um, and we can leave it where it's at. But these are all just proposals to try to, to, try to stymie some of the issues that we're having. Um, I know that increasing the rate is not going to fund other items in town. It's not going to even cover the cost of the pool. It's just to try to, you know, try to make it as, as self-sustaining as possible. Now, if, if it's if it's it may be possible or may be true that maybe uh, an increase of twenty percent, fifteen percent, maybe that will put a lot of people off. I don't know. Um, I mean, I don't know. It seems to me that if I'm paying ten dollars for my son to swim for an entire summer season, I'm okay with that. And, and that's what it is. A family pass is sixty dollars, and that's up to six people. I just I, I wanted to pull the focus back on. 
finance is doable because at the end of the day, I think it's rounding error and focus on these are assets that with the time of the cycle benefit. There, there's a variety of, of non-monetary benefits, including your townspeople together in a you know in a recreational environment where they can actually talk about things sure. and bond. And and that to me far surpasses, you know, whatever whatever revenue increase. That, that's that's an outsider system. No, I think I mean I think Adam has a valid point where you know, we do have to be careful on I mean I think the, the complete idea is to is is obviously not fun to pull through fee schedules it's, it's, a lot of these fees haven't been touched for years. Um, and you know I mean I can you know go you know go down to McDonald's for thirty bucks for my kids, you know, which would pay for you know half a pass for the year. You know, so you know things change a little bit, so maybe we should Take advantage a little bit on on the uh, on the revenue things with some. But I think that the intent with the board would be to continue to have it be a resident focused pool. Is, um, is, there, is there some way that you can cross check against other programs in town and provide passes for people that otherwise couldn't afford the pool? Great. No, I think that would. You know, I think. I think there's some opportunities that, you know, again, in our society, there are you know, um, people that, that pay more than others, right? And I think there's an opportunity here for, you know, if, if some fee schedules do go up, there is probably an opportunity maybe to look at um, some other just about, you know, swimming for free, or, you know, or, or different, you know, maybe the body raising the fee schedule, maybe there's an opportunity to have a free swim night more often, you know, to bring more people down rather than, you know, once a year or whatever it is right now, you know. So I think there's some opportunities. I mean, I, I personally think that, and again, this is just a conversation piece. I think doubling is way, going way too far. Um, I don't, I personally don't know what the rate should be. I mean, it's 30 now, proposing 60, you should be, you know, should be $40, should be $45, should be, should be $35, should be $35. But I, I do think that we probably ought to keep a, there ought to be a, there ought to be a benefit for being a resident versus a non-resident. So, uh, you know, whatever that fee difference is, if it's $20 or $10 or $100 on a family pass, I don't know. But um, I, mean, I personally would probably like to get some more information in regards to the recreational fee structure and maybe some guidance from the rec department on you know if we did raise fees would we lose um, membership um, or if we did raise fees is there some opportunities to open up some other events um, that might pull more people in uh, you know on free nights or something you know is there an opportunity to do more with, with that Most of our budget from that ended July 1st, uh, we didn't seem to be running a deficit. So, so evidently we're you know from last year. I'm, I'm not certain our budget is this year offhand, but uh, we didn't seem to lose money last year at the rate we got now. And I know right now, you know, I, in the time that I've been, it seems like I'm, almost every time I'm in the office this year, there's someone in there buying a pool pass. And I can tell you that, you know, a few of the people that have seen like pool pass in there, you know, to you and I, you know, $30 is probably not a whole lot of money, but I can tell you that a couple of them that I saw in the $30 was $30, you know. So, you know, we have to think about that. Yep. So, so um, <coughs> kind of looking at what happened over the last couple of weeks, it seems to me that an adjacent property is going to be undergoing a lot of construction shortly. And maybe there's an opportunity for the, the new owner of that adjacent property to enhance the rec center as a normal course of improving their property. Yeah. Yeah, so it would those. be like a pseudo sponsorship program. Mm -hmm. There's always those types of opportunities for them. Yeah, no doubt. The, um, did anybody else have anything else in regards to this recreation? Well, the only other the one I was looking at was the water baby lessons session. 
Do we have a lot of? Is that? A, I don't. Is that I, a I, single. That's a one-on-one -on -one session as opposed. Uh, to I. Session? I don't know. I don't know what the water baby. I, I just know it's Andrew. Do you, do you know? Have you, no. your kid done it? It's it's. It's a parent child thing, isn't it? I think so. Yeah. yeah. It's what? I think it's like a parent child. Right, but I'm not sure the. Because yeah, I'm not sure what is it a one-on-one -on -one, though. I, I'm not no, sure. So. Yeah. No, multiple. multiple people attending at the same time. Yes. As opposed to the water baby per class, there's another one on here for water baby lesson per class. Maybe they're giving you a package deal. Right. There's a there's a session. A session rate versus which is a session is multiple weeks, multiple classes, and then there's an individual class. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, they do all the lessons by session, which is I don't know four weeks or something like that. Well, I would just say you know, maybe the my recommendation would be for the rec committee to look at sure. structures. Um, I mean, just some things. You know, I would think that whatever you came up with at the water baby lessons would be at least the same as the daily pass. If you're going to go and have some sort of instruction, it ought to be at least what the normal daily pass is. Sure. Um, well, I'll be attending the rec meeting. Um, was it Thursday night? And I don't know if you now and I've never seen it, but you know, maybe if you have a family pass, then if you have a family pass, you get a discount on your full lessons or anything like that. So that we do that currently. There's, I believe it's a 10% discount if you have a family pass. So that might be an opportunity to get more family pass and maybe offer a, a discount for your swim lessons, you know, to get more draw. Because a swim lesson is $50 for two weeks with a family pass. Yeah, we're also, um, we have family fun nights, which are these, um, they're, they're nights for the whole family to come and do all sorts of activities and things like that. And if you are a, uh, a pass holder, you get in for free. So there is that also kind of going, they, there's a lot of arts and crafts and they had boat races and they have baseball and we're gonna have a luau. And so what if, but, but there is no fee for that if you're a pass holder also. So there is that incentive, but, um, we can definitely, I'll talk to the rec board, see what they think, see if they have any ideas of what may, maybe is. I, I know there was, a few years ago, and there was, there was definitely some strong consensus on why, why the fee structure, okay. I think the only reason about $2, you know, it was, it was pretty minor amount, but they may want to get some feedback from them on why, yep. why we can or can't do that. I'll meet with them Thursday night. The, uh, the town clerks. How much is this all set by the state? With the licenses under the town clerk. Yes. So everything under there is set by state. So there's nothing there. Yeah. Um, Greg, when just on the rec center, when you meet with them, I'm curious if there's, and they may already sort of collect this data of resident versus non-resident and what the usage is. Like, is there a way for them to, throughout this summer, to look at it so it could be a more informed decision? We're already doing that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. we have everybody, uh, when they come in, they check in, they check out, and they, they, I don't know if they say if they're resident or non-resident, we can add that to it, definitely. Yeah. Uh, because what I'm trying to do is collect data to find out what our, um, our labor need is. Yeah. And then that was part of this, this idea with this fee. Um, but we can definitely add that element of, of whether you're resident or not and just collect that data and see where we go. Yeah, because I think that would be my, my biggest curiosity to sort of your earlier point of um, making the, the resident versus non-resident the same. My first thought is if it makes it that much more crowded that then residents are less likely to go. The whole, right. the whole point to me is that it's the Bethel pool. And then if we can glean a little extra revenue from non-residents using it, whether it's somebody here visiting for the summer or whether it's, you know, Randolph or a Barnard resident coming over and using it, you know, sure. know. No, we'll see if I can collect that data. Cool. Yeah. Any other discussions with regards to the fees? Yeah. Yeah. Could this be a mole on one? Yes, yeah. It's kind of yeah. Uh, one document. Yeah, so totally. They don't even uh, hard to make them feel as it seems like the board's pretty good with the zoning. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. And the town hall stuff really didn't change much other than adding the uh, mm -hmm. Park and Van Chill. Um, and then um, we need some more information regarding the Rec Center. Did, did, uh, 
these fees, if we use that number, would they go into effect? Is that, would that be for Well, you would, you would approve them, and then they would go into effect after that. So there's just no, I mean, huge hurry right now, I guess. We're not seeing a lot of subdivisions come in. Uh, but that's where obviously we were. Obviously, like the rec center ones wouldn't. No, not, not till next year. Not okay. till next year. Yeah, because we've already sold the majority of our passes, so yeah. we're not going to. So anything in regards to the zoning, <laughs> town hall, people like park, band shell usage, if we did go ahead and. Well, the idea is to kind of uh, approve this in, in whole okay. and not just parts and pieces of it, because that's kind of what has happened in the past. Um, I, we're not seeing any significant subdivisions where we're losing. We saw a lot last year, a lot of things that were coming in, um, minor and major subdivisions. Yeah. Now, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, I mean, if this takes another <coughs> few weeks to, to get cleared out, again, I'm meeting with the rec board Thursday, so I should get some feedback from them pretty quickly. <coughs> I can get it back to you soon. It was just, I'd rather approve it as, as the entire document. Okay. Mm -hmm. That's fine. So we'll put it back on the agenda for Probably, probably within two meetings, depending on what sort of idea, how quickly or, or how uh, the. So would you make it for the twenty thirty? No. Just depends on what I get yeah. from the rec board. Yeah. Any the rec committee. Any other conversation? It is nice to actually have a conversation about it. Probably the first time. So I've been on the board and had conversations about all the fees. So I would entertain a motion to accept the policies and procedure for the collection of delinquent taxes and utilities. So move. Second. Okay. All in favor? All right. Aye. So um, we, uh, this is just to our printer for our tax maps that we get every year. Uh, this is just a contract with him to do the next year's tax maps. Um, we do this every year, same company we did last year. Uh, he does a really good job. Just allows him to come in and, and use any resources we may have inside the building. Uh, then he prints this out, to, I believe two or three large maps, and then those smaller maps you see in the clerk's office with all the tax information on them. So that's, that's all this is. And the fee structure here is that it is, and this is what we budgeted last year, or for this year, because we knew it was going to be the same. So we, this is the, the cost. We is need a, to have those updated every year. I think they're supposed to be updated every year. Yeah, because like things change, new ownership, things like that. So, yeah. Um, but this, the amount was budgeted. I believe Luis budgeted the, the right amount, pretty close. Um, so it is in the budget, and uh, just kind of a. 
something we do every year. So. Um, I was just curious, is there a particular reason? I, it only said that their principal office was out of North Carolina. I didn't know if they also had a locally based office or if there was a reason we went with a company that was further um, away than somewhere. You know, I can get you an answer to that. I don't really know. Luis, our lister, she's the one who's, who really does all the, the work with this guy and does all the negotiations with him. Yeah. I'm not sure if he has a local office or not, or if he's just was maybe the, the lowest and best that we could find. Right. Um, I'd be curious to, I'll ask her. I'll ask maybe her why. He does all over the state of Vermont. Yeah. yeah. But I'm not sure. Our don't want to do them anymore. And, um, right. So I think it's hard to find people who specialize in that I've seen other towns that you them and he does all over the state. Whether I think he maybe used to be here and then moved, I think he comes back and, you think and does So he has stuff. some ties, possibly. Yeah, I, think so. I can find out. I, I would be curious to know too. But he, um, yeah, he, uh, he definitely does several. He does a lot of towns in Vermont. Yeah, yeah, and it was more. You know, sometimes there's a lot to be said for. Sticking with somebody who already knows your system, yeah. you, right. it's more efficient, exactly. but yeah. it was just a curiosity. Yeah. I think, like I said, local, a lot of local surveyors don't want to get into the property tax map business because it's... Yeah. And he's done it for, I think, at, at least the last two years that I've been around, and so this will be the next year. So, um, But that's a good question. I can find out from her. Cool. Does, does he review all property transfers and then adjust the map? Yes, so he comes in, that's, that's what this kind of talks about. He's allowed to come in free of charge to do records requests and look through all of our records and all that um, without us charging him anything to do that. So that's part of what this contract allows for. He and, and Luis work pretty closely together. She updates him on all the changes and, and makes them happen on paper. So does it feel like that uh, board wise that the, the cost $2,675 to have this service done? This, we have these tax maps. Yeah, but it's the way it's written is he has it for two years too, from uh, 17 to 19. Oh, so, so they must have already. Oh, and she said yeah. that the select board already approved yeah. this once. Yes. So, so this is this is year. essentially for next year. Yeah. yeah. So you could put it out to bid next year, have her do um, the whole thing out. Yeah. When, when you saw this last year, it was for it was for two years, mm -hmm. but the amount was just it was a little confusing. It was for two years, but the amount he was asking was for one year for that. That current year, but it's, it's just your second year. Yeah. And I have no issue with going forward with it as is. In this yeah. one, you know, we do have a purchasing policy now that we get, and we, you know, it even stipulates that we go out to a bid process, and we can do that. Um, next year, we can go out to a formal yeah. bid and just see what we get. Yeah. I have no problem with that whatsoever. No, no, we. We'd okay this and then go on. Yeah. On a bit yeah. next year. The next cycle. Oh, I thought this yeah. is for next year. This is for 19, which is kind of next year. Yes. So this is, yeah. Yeah, because it says uh, so the be completion of each map update 2018 and April 18 and April 19. Right. The, the new maps just came out. So. Okay. So that's April. So this will be for the next set of maps. Okay. So after April 19, then we could. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe just, just go out to bed. Yeah. yeah. Yes. See what's out there. Okay. Yep, that's wrong. And I would uh, entertain a motion to approve uh, Russell Graphics um, to do the property map for the year 2019. Second. And all in favor? All right. Aye. Do you have a copy of Russell's sign? I'm doing it right here, yeah. Okay. Map in the background. Yeah.
had an item and I very good say that the clerk just in case this year the clerk was left off of the approvals that we did last year, uh, two Mondays ago. Uh, I believe, believe the, um, the rate would be the same as the others. Yeah, um, yeah we, so we um, proposed a 2% cost of living and then a 1% merit. So um, that's what everybody else was kind of running off of. Yeah. So 3% total. Entertain a motion? I move that we uh, include the town clerk into our pay rate increase. Yeah. Raise increase for the year of 2% COL and 1%. Okay. Second? Second. on vacation yeah no I've got a key uh, <laughs> that was that uh, big <laughs> vacation <laughs> I'll get them tomorrow I have a key too both of them one north thing's not working either mm -hmm. trust me there's somebody in town that's told me many times. <laughs> we're working on that we're working on some fixed location ones that are solar powered yeah uh, exactly. through a grant it, well I'm waiting to get the money just waiting on the grant. waiting on the money yeah. and then we'll go out and go go buy some cool. and one more thinking one will be on by the school which is a hot location um, be a fixed location with a solar panel on the top so that it runs and we don't have to worry about the batteries dying. And then, I don't know where else, but um, it would be nice to have something like that. So, but I will fix the batteries and I'll put new ones in tomorrow. Before or after two. the pool? Probably, not, <laughs> probably before. Fix the light in the pool. Yeah, yeah. Uh, town manager's report. Yeah, so uh, my report is in your packet. Uh, just a couple little highlights here. Uh, I sent everybody um, some information. We're, we're looking at doing a uh, planning study, to a grant through the state. Um, I know we've done a lot of different planning, uh, different planning documents in the past. Um, I just sent that out so I could kind of start to gather any information or any ideas from any of you or anybody else um, for types of planning grants that you might be interested in seeing. Uh, I've gotten, Mo has given me a couple ideas, plus I had a couple of my own, but I'd, I would like to hear if there are any ideas for, for any types of potential planning grants that, that you would be interested in seeing in town. So. Have you touched base with the planning commission? Would they be able to help at all? Or? I haven't touched bases with them, but I can. I can. Be good to reach out to them. Yeah. yeah. I haven't gotten to their meeting yet. So. Um, but if there's any ideas that you may have, just let me know. Yeah. Okay. Um, the town hall painting, so I am, uh, I've been in, in contact with the painters. They're still on track to get it done by the, or at least start by the end of July, um, finalizing the actual contract documents um, for them so that we can get them under contract soon, like real soon. Um, but as far as I know, uh, barring some unforeseen issue, they should be here in July, the end of July, worst case, in July, to start working on that. It should take them couple weeks I'm guessing uh, and that'll be a that'll be a full scraping it down and repainting it with a few two coats of paint um, and then doing the white all the way to the top so it'll be from the bottom of the bell tower all the way up they're gonna do the whole thing um, and then we'll just have to find somebody who wants to recreate the, the eagle on top because that fell off the wind blew that off and it broke it silly question is this going to address the lead through problem it does well According to Benjamin Moore, it will. So they're giving us, we sent out, before I started, the previous manager had sent out the specs and uh, the material that they thought it was, and we assume that it is. And um, the paint is supposed to hold up to that, and there's a, an issue with weeping, they think, through the, the flashing material. Um, that's something that these painters are gonna, hopefully, that we, we've talked to them about it, that they're gonna address that issue too. So there was concern, and there was kind of two things going on. It was the paint was failing, because of the type of metal and the paint wasn't the adequate paint, and there was actual kind of weeping coming in from, from failure in the flash of the turret. Right. So, this, this, I mean, this was done in the not too recent past. I mean, yeah. Before we got here, not that long before. Yeah. Right. And I'm I, sure the same promises were made about where all the foreign pilots and go to Well, I, I was in touch with the Ben Moore guy 
he was one of my con my Benmore contacts, so I got him hooked up with Keith, and he came out and vol they voluntarily came up, took chips, and did investigations and tried to analyze what was going on with the paint, and then suggested obviously that product um, that could be used to rectify the situation. Can we get them to warranty it and they can use us in an advertisement? Uh, I was trying to get them to pay for the paint. <laughs> <laughs> You know, <clears throat> but I don't. Th I don't think we've gone that direction yet. But yeah, that I, I think that would have to be part of the contract. I would assume that to be a warranty. I think there's been a lot more discussion in regards to painting of the tower this time around than there was mm -hmm. probably the initial time. Now, will it 100% correct the issue and not come back again? I think it's like any other thing. Probably, you know, I mean, we live in Vermont, so I don't know. Six years from now, we might be talking about painting the tower again. You know, I don't know how long it's going to last. Um, we didn't get any guarantee of this is going to last you 15 years type thing. So we hope that it lasts longer than the last time. Um, is there any opportunity? Is the historical society committee still around? Mm -hmm. Functional? Are they, they are. Or, or the, I'm sorry, the town hall committee? It must be. Yeah, I think it's really just a assembly at this that, point. Yeah. Because I wonder if there's any opportunity for Grant or we have a grant. Any money is that we're well, getting historic get structures. Oh, for the that thing was made of almost paper from mache. It was <laughs> it was kind of fiberglass, I think, or something. Or the eagle. Thing. I don't know who who or originally. There's put any it opportunities for you know donations to get a, you know, a nice brass one or right. copper or something that would be you know more rugged and last longer. It's technically Dave and Nick Nicolaitis, but I think Nick had, had to manage your time or something. Right. I'll stop and see. I maybe mean, get something together to get that addressed. Okay. Um, so, water master plan uh, is about 95% done. Uh, it has been sent to the state and myself to review. Um, we're hoping to have that finished within the next couple of weeks. Um, and it, it looks really nice. It's got the, um, like I said, it's got the current system. It shows, um, like uh, it gives us a capital improvement plan. It talks about the lifespan of the, um, what we have. Um, it categorizes the need by three different categ categories. Gives us a timeline, you know, it's immediate and then there's intermediate, which is five to 10 years. And so it spells everything out really nice. Talks about our hydraulic issues that we have. Uh, talks about the modeling. That was used. So, pretty thorough document. Uh, it has a lot of the stuff in it that, that I wanted to see. Um, we've met with um, Tim and I met with the state and our engineer on this at about 90% review um, two weeks ago, and everybody was impressed, even the state. So, uh, we're really kind of just waiting to hear back from the state at this point, and, and the, their wheels move a little slowly. But um, as soon as we get them get them on board, we'll, we'll have a finished document, and then we can start looking at a capital improvement plan for the water system that we can put together and start figuring out how to fund it. So I know before we were talking September, October, hoping to have everything back. Mm -hmm. Oh, easily. So it sounds like easily. Back we'll that. I think so. I think, I, I mean, if the state could kind of move on and I think we'll be ready to go within a month. I think it'll be a finished document within a month. It's finished and approved by the state within a month. And then the next steps really are figuring out funding to address the issue. Yeah, well, well, we'll put together an actual capital improvement plan. So, you know, with this year and then out years, and then, yeah, how we're going to fund it. Because the hope was to have the plan together and be able to budget it. Um, you know, for the It'll be ready for the budget. 1920 budget. Mm -hmm. So, mm -hmm. yep. And is, are there opportunities in terms of grants or other sources of funding that, that this document can help us push it, those, or is, is sure. it really just all internal? There are grants that the state provides um, that we can look at that will, one of the, the prerequisites would be to have the water master plan done. Yeah. Um, the main reason, I will tell you, the main reason we're doing it is because our operating permit that allows us to actually provide water requires it. So we didn't have a choice. We needed it anyway, we really did, but we didn't have a choice. Um, so what'll happen technically, as far as the state sees it, the next step is that we, we, we pick up a project 
and then we go and start doing engineering and design on it. And we've already got our application. We actually already got approval from the state for a state revolving fund loan, uh, which is a, I believe it's gonna be a 0% interest loan, long-term loan that would allow us to fund one or two or however many of these projects that we feel fit um, until we can find other, other ways to fund or, or put money in a capital plan or whatever. Yeah. So the money is, um, the, the grant, or not the grant, but the loan funds are, are kind of sitting there waiting yeah. for uh, the finalization of this and then the board to pick a project and away we go. So, yeah. Um, bridge 33 which is um, Lilyville Bridge, I don't know, High Bridge, it has all, has all kinds of names. Um, it has, there's a wing wall we've had issue with, we got a structures grant, we've actually received two structures grants, one for engineering and one for the construction. Um, finalizing the, the design on that, the um, project will go out to bid next week. So we're hoping within the next few months we'll have that project finished up and, and have, it, uh, have it done. Um, we, like I said, we got a structures grant, we've already been approved. Uh, the money has been budgeted for this year for our match, so we just got to get the just got to get the work done. Um, <clears throat> it's going to be a little bit of a pain because we'll have to shut down a large section of the road for up to three weeks, but um, it, but we'll make it work. We'll make it work. So. Did you get your easements all straightened around? I did. Good. Yeah, I did. We had a, a small easement that we had to get. Um, it was just a maintenance easement that we had to get. Talked to the owner, didn't have any issue with it at all. We just have to. Put together the the document, have them sign it in the easement. So not a big not a big hiccup at all. So um, no cost with that, other than just recording fees. So project should be should be good to go. We'll get that thing fixed up, and and that bridge will last forever. So, um, road crews have have done been doing a lot of tree trimming and and picking up trees. We've been seeing a rash of of trees falling down. I don't know why. I don't know if it's the wind or the but there's been a lot of trees down, so the guys have been busy doing that. Um, they, they finalized that project out on at least the portion that's, re, that's refundable uh, out in the Four Corners area. That's, that part is all done. Uh, we met our threshold with the state. Uh, I will be uh, putting together our um, cost estimate and our reimbursement request for that, hoping to get the funds back in two, three weeks for that. Um, there's still some more work to be done there, but it's outside the scope of that project. It's something that we would have done anyway some uh, uh, retaining, uh, we had uh, some barricades that we need to put in and some grading of the road. So that'll get done in the next few weeks, but the, the rock lining and the culverts and all that has all been done. Looks really nice. State was real happy with it. Um, so yeah, should be seeing the money coming back from that in a, the next month or so. Uh, other than that, we're just trying to stay cool. Any questions? stuff so they're just really preliminary numbers at this point I really wouldn't put any stock into it and I haven't even had a chance to review those yet usually you see my initials on them and obviously they're not so um, uh, so you'll see a little bit I know Chris you're anxious to see how we're going to turn out and projections and all that so we'll uh, concentrating right now on putting tax bills out tomorrow and then we'll you know see a little bit as it comes in but I think you're gonna you know, our hope is that everybody lands where they're supposed to. Certainly, since September, everybody's been coding their own bills and really realizing that there's a bottom line there. So for our first meeting in August, mm -hmm. we'll probably have everything back by then. Possibly. I mean, they give you 60 days. But yeah, I will have made all my audit entries yeah. for that. Right. For, so. Or the fourth Monday in August, we get yeah. so we'll have a final line. Oh, yeah. You'll, you'll be, yeah. yeah. What would be nice to do is have a dummy down version that we can okay. present to the public mm -hmm. if need be. Um, you know, just kind of a uh, estimated revenue versus actual revenue, sure. budget based, mm -hmm. and 
say for the cost, yep. and then maybe separate out uh, any, let's say, any uh, state funded projects yeah. that came in after the fact. Then we should see some grant, any cost grant versus revenue on that. If the revenues yeah. haven't come yet, maybe what do we anticipate? <coughs> And then on the line item for um, collective um, back taxes that we collected would be nice to see. Sure. <laughs> so I mean, it would just be nice to see what our, our, yeah, our true budget nice. was. Exactly. Estimated versus actual on right. the cost. Yeah. Any extras, any extra grants or stuff that we took advantage of after that. Sure. And yeah, because by then we should have anything that's outstanding. Greg's always really good about requisitioning his money right away. You know, so is Mark. I can't really think of any big outstanding that anybody else is running right now. So I think within 60 days, usually the state's pretty good if you get it in. Um, so yeah, we'll definitely have a better idea. But those are, you know, like I said, I haven't even looked at those numbers that you're holding. Very preliminary, so. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There's a comma missing. I think she's at four. <laughs> <laughs> I it was good. Entertain a motion to accept. Yep, I make a motion we accept the minutes from uh, 625. Second. a little bit. I, oh, I haven't seen that idea right now, but there's a couple things in there that needs to be amended that weren't actual happening down there in the minutes. Uh, one of them was the uh, um, it was stated that the money coming from Green Lantern was going to the solid waste facility, which it isn't. It's divided between the two towns. Okay. And the other thing was uh, uh, we voted to approve Green Lantern, and it was voted down, and it said it's, it was tabled, but it was voted down. The voting of the Green Lantern down was? Three, four, two against. Being your, your. Uh, the solid waste board. Yeah, so yeah. the solid waste board's involvement. In it. Right, but it was, as you know, that's not a, uh, we're just a tenant, so what we what we say doesn't mount to anything. Okay. <clears throat> that was all I could see that was different in that that should be should it's got to be changed. Yeah, and this is sort of what you said, but my one question was the, the line that tax money from the project goes to the town of Royalton, but lease money goes to the transfer station. Right. And that just seemed a little odd. It doesn't go. There. That's what I'm saying. Okay. That, that's going to be corrected because yeah. it doesn't go to the facility. It goes to the towns. I think the other one was um, there was was support. I think they were asking for the, the joint board to support. Right, which I just said. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and they said it had been voted down, but then it said it was voted down and, and then tabled. Postponed. Mm -hmm. or, yeah, which is not. Yeah, it was. It was. It wasn't. It was. You don't tape. You don't vote something down and table right. it. Mm -hmm. So I've got a question about some of the other committee. Yeah. Um, Greg, we talked about having the rec committee come in, talk about the skateboard. We have any yeah, so they, um, I had asked them to come into this meeting and they were a little hesitant because they wanted to meet themselves before and they meet tomorrow. Um, no, they meet Thursday. And I'm, I'm going to that meeting also. Um, so they, we will have them on the agenda at the next day, the 23rd, 23rd. Mm -hmm. they'll, be, they'll be here for that. To discuss this good the skateboard mm -hmm. work. and the energy committee it doesn't seem like we've heard anything from them in 
six months or more, maybe. I think it was maybe before town I, meeting even. Yeah, they, they I think they're losing a little bit. I think they've, I don't think they had a couple, only two members that were pretty active in it. I think that that's slowed down a little bit. Well, um, we had approved seven grand for a matching study, study of some kind. I mean, it'd be nice and, to get a progress report on them. Right, and it hasn't gone anywhere. And, uh, I talked with Jose a little bit and didn't sell any data. We had a lot of activity going on with anything, but I can touch bases with them and see. Yeah, nice it's time for me to get back out. And I, I, every, I don't know, four or five months, I try to make it to all the meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, and I won't do that again. I'll start making it around everybody's meetings and kind of see where they're at. So. I don't even know if they're having meetings, so. though. Mm -hmm. I don't think that they are. I know the attendance is that meetings have been down. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the, the um, visioning committee has kind of sputtered to yeah. a slow crawl at this point due to only two active members. Right. So, well, on the record, the same way. There's uh, one, three or four now, three, I think. Maybe it might be time to put another advertisement in the paper about getting active in the committees and you know, what you can do for your community type thing. And maybe just list some of the committees that have openings because the involvement hasn't quite been there here. Mm. In the, the only so. active one to be seen is the Conservation Commission. They seem to be mm -hmm. yep. meeting regularly and giving us yeah. reports. Mm -hmm. Well, I can do another ad if you'd like me to, with just, hey, you know, participate in your town, your, your other committees, if you're or interested. Maybe even asking the individual committees to put together sort of, I don't know if it's a, it's a flyer or just a little blurb about what it is they do, but sort of sell themselves and then, you know, give that to you to then put out um, that might, because I think especially people in newer to the town that don't know what committees do wouldn't you know an ad in the paper that just says join the energy committee might not mean anything or resonate with them whereas if they mm -hmm. learn a little bit about what the energy committee's doing sure. or about then they might be more excited okay i can do that well, i think we were looking for an update from the planning commission too chris mm -hmm. you know, yeah maybe we try to catch up with them maybe next them. wednesday so i think they uh, as well have they had some changes in the guards there, and I don't think they're firing on all cylinders right now either. But they, they need to have something done by but they're work, they're next, main thing next right year, now. right? Yeah, their main thing right now is working on the, the questionnaire. The, and and yeah, I think so. they got that survey completed. We have that survey at the office right now. So it's done. I think the intent is out. from, because they usually send it out in the fall. So that, that'll be hitting, hitting soon. But we've got a survey at the office that they completed. That's, I think that's from so. What's one that's getting stuck in the top though? Is that conservation? Yeah, the one we have I in the office is, the one we have in the office, I think, is the planning commission. Okay, I know. That's right. their question. One on the shelf and something yeah, going past those. So. I well, you think that one might want to go out in the tax bills too? Excuse me? Would that want to go out in the tax bills too? Yeah, it's that's the same one. One of them oh, is, oh. but I don't that's know. That's the same one. Oh, is that's it? the I planning know. commission. I've just yeah. seen them fold that I have not read. Yeah, it's the planning commission. Okay. Sir. Yep. Any other business? I do. Um, so we had an issue over the 4th of July weekend with an animal uh, that was left in a trailer and the constable took the animal and, and had it um, taken to a vet in an emergency place to, to be checked out. It was super hot in the place it was in. So anyway, um, the dog is now in a Humane Society, and the person who who owns the dog has has been uh, given a ticket. So they, in order to, to get the dog back, they have to pay um, the fine and the boarding cost and the um, the fee when we first took the dog and take it, kind of took it to the emergency room, if you will. Uh, this individual um, has some financial issues, um, it's, it's more than obvious that there are some financial issues there. And so they have asked that I come to the board and ask the board if they would be willing to um, either waive in whole or at least in part the um, emergency fees that we incurred from this dog. Um, the total for the small animal emergency and specialty vet was is $527 and, and this individual um, is currently required to pay 100% of that. So 
Um, but they had asked me to come and, and, and talk to the board and see if the board would be willing to, to compromise and either weigh that in whole or in part. So I told them I would do that and with no, um, not make any promises of any kind, but um, I would bring it up and, and see what you thought about it. Um, this, uh, this individual is trying to, um, to move away save some money to move away, and this is going to significantly damper that ability to move out. Um, in whole, this could be close to $1,000 by the time they pay for all the fees and everything else. We're looking at about $1,000. So, uh, I'm asking for any discussion, any ideas you might have, yes or no, no way, yes, I'm fine with that, whatever. Um, the bill is $527, and do you feel that, that any sort of a, um, a compromise is what were the circumstances of the... I can't get into too much of it. That's okay. why I'm really trying to think before I talk right now. Okay. Uh, which is hard for me to do. So, uh, it was just hot. Well, as far as our constable goes, he did everything in accordance to... Yes, state, he followed state statute. Procedure. Yeah. Uh, he, yes, he did. Legally, he did. Um, there was a complaint. Um, he checked out the situation. The, uh, there was enough circumstance, it was 95 degrees outside, and he forced his way into the premises, um, I don't know if it was locked or not, but got in, got the dog, took the dog to the emergency, the dog emergency room, um, and then it, it kind of fell from there. So. And this isn't somebody that there's been known incidences with before, I mean, I'm, I'm assuming Mark would have known that if he's gotten calls about this. Mm, there was... No, I don't think he, he wasn't aware of any other incidences with this this owner of this law. No. Was the uh, trailer opened up or for ventilation, or was it just airtight? Yes, the windows were open. Okay. Uh, I don't. That's a whole other thing. It was hot outside. Mark right. had enough probable cause in his mind to take the dog. The reason I asked is like a dog in a, in a car with the windows up when it's hot out. You know, I was wondering if it was just in a stifling area well, where there could, wasn't any air coming in. Or. Uh, so we, um, we we utilize the state police. They have an officer who is a kind of a specialist in, in dogs, I guess. Mm -hmm. um, Mark utilized him after the fact to kind of, um, you know, justify what he did. Mm -hmm. And the officer said, yeah, he felt that the dog was in him was 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 yes and I, i've seen mark in action mm -hmm. a couple weeks ago my kids and i were getting ice cream down here and there was a dog that was in the car and the windows were up and you know he went out of his way for you know 15 or 20 minutes to try and find the owners when he probably could have been justified by breaking the window and tossing people so you know and knowing mark i'm sure he did everything that he could possibly have done yes he had a complaint. Was this a travel? Of this. However, you know, when you have a, a pet, it's no different than a child, there's responsibilities. And, you know, I, I'm mm -hmm. you know, speaking for myself, anyways. I mean, you have a responsibility. And, um, well, he was within his rights per state law to do what he did. Was this a travel trailer? or? Uh, I think so. Okay. I think that so. makes a difference, too. Mm. Yeah, I think it was. I don't know all the details of it, but I. So anyway, um, I'm just not, I'm not going to take any questions or any comments right now just because I just want to keep it at the board level in mm -hmm. regards to this request. Um, you know, not not saying that what you have is not valid, but I just want to keep it at the board level. Our, so our, our ordinances as well as, as state statute says that, that when a dog is taken, it is a responsibility of the owner to pay the fees, mm -hmm. whatever fees that would be, whether that's fines or fees or whatever. It is their responsibility to pay that. That's understood. Um, the idea here is that this is more of a financial hardship. Uh, and I'm not petitioning one way or another, I'm just giving it to you. Um, I sh they had asked me to, to discuss this with you and I told them I would bring it up and see where it goes. 
I'd say our statutes say that uh, they're responsible and, and that makes them responsible to pay any outstanding money. Yeah. I, mean, I, I think it sets a, a tough precedent for us if we make an mm -hmm. allowance here. Mm -hmm. It opens a door that we might not want to open. I agree. Yeah. It's unfortunate, but... Yeah. Understood. <coughs> Thank you. Any other comments? Have anyone comment now? We just, I didn't seem to want to have uh, this case. I was going to ask if the person had a skill and you should work it off. And say yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I just, you know, some of these cases, it's better to not take a comment uh, at certain times of the year. Did we have anything else before the board? So that How do you want that noted in the notes? Just the board agree that the board is responsible for the cost? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. I will. Uh, this time, I'll entertain a motion to go into executive session in regards to legal. So move. Second. Second. Uh,